straight to question. Go ahead, Kyle Tucker. Now, obviously, a huge question for you guys. Ty Ty able to practice yesterday. No. What, what are your thoughts on him this weekend? They didn't practice yesterday. Damian didn't practice yesterday. Jacob didn't practice yesterday. Orlando wasn't at practice yesterday. Um, so we were down to two and the rent was due. What uh, What is the outlook for Ty Ty and those of this weekend? You ready? I haven't seen them yet. Eric, go ahead. Yeah, John, I wanted to ask you about uh, Kansas is a high powered offense, it seems, sort of like you guys. What What do you see as the keys in this game? Um, we have to do our stuff better than they do their stuff because it's really similar. <laughs> um, they take 23s a game, but shoot them at a high percentage, especially a couple of the guys that they know to get them off. They do a great job. Uh, Bill's always done a great job of creating post areas for people to score so they get easy baskets. Um, they play really fast. They really – they're dr they're running dribble drive. Um, you know, but he uh, – this, this is the ultimate challenge, going to Allen Fieldhouse – uh, they're a top five team and, and saying, all right, let's give ourselves a chance. And how do you do that? Uh, John, as a follow, how I, I remember, I think it was after the last game, you said, Ty, Ty, I took it as he can kind of create and make it happen. And I'm wondering if that's more important, the, the higher quality of the opponent. Well, it, it doesn't matter it, when, it, when it comes down to it in the last three minutes, it's players making plays not offense creating a shot for a player because we, we all scout each other um, if their post player creates more space to get a shot than you do to close it down or to fight him catching the ball outside a scoring area then he made a basketball play if the guard beats you on the dribble and gets to the rim and shoots a floater or shoots it over you he just created a shot for himself that that's these kind of games. Now, um, if Ty Ty is not a hundred percent, this isn't a game you play a guy at eighty percent. Just not, and you just you know. And the same with Jacob. Um, it's kind of like we're at Auburn, and I looked at Savir, and I just said, "Hey, you know, if you four minutes to go, and we got a chance, but I'm not. If you can't go, don't go." And, um, you know, the kid has unbelievable courage. Neck was killing him. But let me let me say this. So now we have the entire team responsible. If he's picking up full, to let him know that there's someone there. And Coach Chin. I told Coach Chin, you get a technical and run out on the floor if he doesn't hear it. I'd rather you get thrown out of a game than him get hit again. Chandler, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, you talk about um, shooters needing to go in the gym and repeatedly uh, getting better with their shot. And I was wondering, how important is shot form, one? And then also, should a player know by their shot form if it's going to go in or not? You said shot form? Yeah. Um, it, you know what? I've seen guys shoot it like this, and it goes in. I've seen guys shoot it like that, and it goes in. I've seen guys shoot it like that. I've seen Devin Booker shoot it like that, and it goes in. If you want to be a confident shooter, you got to be in the gym and build your confidence. It doesn't come from a coach. You're so hard on him. It does not come from a coach. It is repetition, repetition. You convince yourself that this ball is going in. The guy that thinks he's going to make it, even after he misses two or three, has a chance of making it. The guy that ball fakes because he missed two and drives in and turns it over or takes the worst shot you could ever see, doesn't have confidence, doesn't come from the coach. And so you got to get in the gym. And the biggest thing I tell all these guys, and they'll tell you, shoot it straight. No matter, I don't care what your form looks like. If the ball goes straight, you ready? 
you got a chance. If it goes crooked, left or right, you have absolutely no chance. Now, I'll give you another one. Rebound attempts. Oscar was in the 90s last game. Do you think that's why he got 23 rebounds? Because he got fouled on the last play, thrown to the floor. That should have been 23. No call, but that's okay. If you rebound attempts are at 60 or 50, you're not going to rebound. You're not if you don't attempt to rebound, you won't believe this. You're not going to get a rebound. So it's the same idea. Shoot it straight. Don't care how you shoot it. Be confident. If you pass up shots, you guys know now. If you pass up an open shot, what am I going to do? You pass up two, I'm taking you out. Shoot the ball. Don't want to hear it. If you're 0 for 10, it's on me. Get back in the gym and work on your shot. Larry Bott, up next. John, when you talk about the guys that weren't in practice and not knowing yet who will be there today or not, how much confidence after the other night now do you maybe have in Allen, Ware, Hopkins, and is Shaden to the point you could play him in a game like this if you needed him? Well, I, I got a note. Um, from one of my players who played for me and uh, congratulated me on the, the wins. By the way, Rick Patino's got 799, goes for 800, I think, tonight or tomorrow. So that's a great thing. Um, I wish him well. Um, and he said to me, you know, Coach, you believed in me more than I believed in myself. And he said, I went on the court not wanting to let you down because of that. And I would hope when I'm trying to raise the bar and I think guys are better than they think they are, when they look back and said, you believed in me more than I even believed in myself. I had people around me telling me I was soft or you, I knew this would happen. And I, and, and, but you got me on the same mode of you are better than this. You are capable of this. I am holding you to a high standard. Um, and so uh, I don't know how I got started on that, but it's one of the things I'll tell you with this group. I have more confidence in Dante shooting the ball than he does. Now, he and I have about the same confidence in his defense. It's about his is about like mine. But offensively, I told him when he walked in that game, you keep shooting the ball. Shoot it. Um, I'm trying to get Bryce minutes. Um, and just do all the little things. Fall back on your training, not your individual work training with somebody. Your training that we give you every day in practice. Fall back on that. And if you fall back on that, you could play with confidence. So, um, you know, Damian was out. I'm hoping to see today. This is a rough house game. This will be, again, I want him in there, but it, it'll be a rough house game. And it's shading to the point you could play him if you needed to because of numbers. I, I'd rather not right now, only because I think he needs more time to, you know, elevate the intensity, the the fight, all the stuff that you need. Um, you know, I'm going to show them because that's what you learn to do at Kentucky is fight to create your own space. You learn to fight because every game we play, Larry, is someone's Super Bowl. Yeah, Super it is. And they'll act like, well, it's not a big game and all that. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, but it's someone's Super Bowl. And you learn to fight. Or you look to make excuses. Or people around you look to make excuses. You learn to fight. So an NBA coach hit me today, said, I watched your team a little bit. They're doing great. I like your team. And he said, I said, you know, we got to work on this, that, and the other. And he says, okay, but just keep getting better. You're going to be in good shape. And then I said, how are you? He said, you know, we're not as good as we were. But my team fights, so I'm good. See, in that, if if that's your plan, then you got to learn to fight. And our guys, that's the thing. Well, you're going to come in, and only two guys are going to shoot it. You're going to be the main man, and you're going to get all the balls. And you're no. Here is you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to create your space. You're going to have to earn your way. This team, when people watch them, what do they say about this team? They say two things. Do you guys watch the games or anything? What do you think they say? 
everybody that hits me. Well, let me say this. Basketball bennies, people that watch the game. Man, does your team play hard and fight. Second thing, they are so unselfish. It's fun to watch them play because they pass it to each other. Well, that's why I'm happy every day I walk in practice. Now, when we have guys out, yeah, I worry. I worry because there's a couple guys more important than a couple others, but it's like that on every team. Um, but we got a good group of guys. Hey, Gardner, go ahead. John this, is, John, this is Hayes Gardner with the Louisville Career Journal. Here in Louisville, there's a lot of discussion about uh, the end of Chris Mack's time at Louisville. I was curious if you had any thoughts about Chris Mack's time at Louisville and the situation here in Louisville. Well, I feel bad for he and his family. Um, Coaching is a hard profession. And, um, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're all 30 days from bankruptcy, everybody in this profession. And that's how it is. And so I, I feel bad for him. But I remember talking to Senator McConnell, the leader, and we were talking about the situation. This was a while ago when they were, there were things they were struggling with. And he said to me, he said, Cal, I'm not worried about athletics. Athletics at Louisville will always bounce back. We got to get the rest of this stuff right. That's what he said to me. And, you know, I sat back and I said, over the years, Athletics at Louisville has always been fine. Now there have been ups and downs in every program. There are ups and downs in this program. You know, so I think it'll be fine. Um, they've got to get, you know, hire a president, hire an AD, hire a coach, get, you know, get their thing rolling, create the culture that they want. But it's Louisville. It's an outstanding athletic program. And I know right now they're 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 mad that I would even say that, but it is. It's true. I mean, it's won national titles, football games, women's bat. You think about it. They just got to get things in order. And my guess is within a couple of years, they'll be right there. John Wong, go ahead. John, the environment. You got a bad connection, John. Cut it off. It's Cut natural. It off. And your team, the last Cut three off. games I hear one, on the one road, thing. they have done very well in hosting. I couldn't hear John because of the it was breaking up. So who's next? Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, John. Uh, Kentucky fans are kind of caught up in the all-time victories. I think Kentucky's got three more than Kansas. How big a deal is that to you or or the team? Until you told me, I didn't know. How about that? Um, <laughs> we're trying to win every game we play. Um, somebody said something about 200 wins in Rupp, and, and Deb will tell you, I had no idea. Um, the only reason I knew 800 is my daughter, Erin, said I was there for every one of them. You remember that. She reminded me. I didn't know. I mean, I, I'm not doing this for numbers. Um, trying to put a program together that everybody would be proud of. I'm trying to do it with all the clutter that goes along with this program um, and, and trying to keep kids safe for two years. You think about it. Worried about mental health. Done that for 30 years. I've had Bob Rotella for 30 years. So with my teams and my staff and us. So, but you're trying to do all that and still win games and then be there. The top 10 games on TV this year. You ready? Five of them were Kentucky. Five of them were Kentucky. So, you know, there may be people mad and this, that, and the other. They're just not around the country. They're, they're looking and they want to see us. A lot of times, what do they want to watch us do? They ain't watching to see us win. And that's fine. Makes it even funner if you can go in and go on the road and win a game. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a – look, you got programs that have done this for a long time, and Kentucky's not the only one. Kansas has been that way. Uh, I talked to Ted Owens today. I got to tell you the story, and I know – May drive you crazy. But Bob Hill was recruiting Joe Frizz, saw me as a sophomore, watched me then at five-star, 
and uh, they were recruiting me. I wasn't good enough for Pitt, but Bob, you know, sent me notes and stuff. So then when I graduated, he said, why don't you come to our camp? He saw me at Five Star and work. Drove cross country with, uh, uh, who was it with? P.D. Uh, Strickland, who was a player at Pitt. Drove I-70 all the way to Lawrence. There's an exit off I-70 to Lawrence. And worked the camp. And Ted Owens, who I talked to this morning, said, why don't you stay? I love how you're working with the kids and be on my staff. Well, I was ecstatic. What? Kansas? And I said, what position? He said, volunteer. And I said, well, how much does that guy make? You're going to work for Paul and Margaret in the uh, uh, the training room, which I did. I served peas and corn. I was a peas and corn guy. Which one do you want or do you want both? Uh, I lived with Dolph Carroll in housing that Ron Tebow, uh, an alum at the time, gave us. It was a... Uh, a shotgun house where you could look in the front, walk in the front door, see the back door, and a leaf would go through and then go under the back door. We had no furniture because at that time, Dolph and I had to make a decision. Do we get furniture or do we get ESPN that just came out? So we could rent furniture or rent ESPN. We couldn't do both. So we rented ESPN. I'm going to tell you another quick story. So now he has this nice bed and I don't have anything. I'm sleeping on the floor. So there was a movie the day after. You remember the movie? It was taped in Lawrence, Kansas. And Allen Fieldhouse was the triage. So one day I'm going in my office and I look out there and there are beds all over the floor of Allen Fieldhouse. They're cots. They're basically cots. But there was one double wide cot. It's a double wide cot. And I looked at Dolph and I said, let's stick this in your Jeep. I'm taking this. This is my new bed. Now, you have to understand, there were 500 beds in there. I did leave $50 on the floor just so in case anybody said anything. Then when I took it to the house, I needed to put a piece of plywood because it wrapped around me when I tried to sleep. So I... But it was the greatest time of my life. I had no worries, no money. All I was doing is showering in the same shower that Fog Allen showered in. Ted Owens, Larry Brown, Bob Hill, JoJo White, um, Ed Manning. Um, you know, I, I just had, at, the, at a young age, a chance for that. So when I go back to Kansas, I, I go around. I met my wife there. That's where I met her. And, and I don't know how she got me, but she worked there and she just worked it over and then she got me somehow. I can't, don't understand it, but um, she had a house. I'm going to go buy her house. I'll go buy where we lived in the, in the, it was a, it was a, a, a duplex double anyway, but the, I got great memories of that place. Great memories, unbelievable commitment to the school from that state. Every stone is from the same quarry that they build on that campus. Um, like I said, talked to Larry Brown a couple days ago. We talked about our time. I talked to Coach Owens this morning. I was hoping either one or both could be there. Um, and no, it's going to be a war. It's going to be an absolute war. And a lot of people have come through there. I mean, R.C. Buford, who's running the, the Spurs, uh, we were GAs. I mean, you know, so, but it's, it's an interesting game for us and um, hard game wrapped around. Are you ready? Hard games. It's, it's normal here. All right. Last question to Nick Gabriel, coach, and then we'll move on to players. John Allen Fieldhouse reminds me of what Memorial Coliseum was like when the men played there prior to Rupp Arena. How would you describe game day atmosphere at Kansas for, especially for a game like this. Well, it's different than Memorial. It, it is an air hanger. So it's a, it looks like an air hanger. Okay. It's probably 70 years old, maybe older than that. Okay. Um, so the end zone seats are long. It, it's more like the building in Louisville. The end zone seats are real long and the sidelines aren't as long. The sound, folks, goes from the floor. 
and hits that ceiling and comes right back to you to where you feel the sound. You feel it. Like I've been in there where I got pushed on the floor from the sound. The floors, you can eat off the floors in that building. That building, it it's a... Uh, it's iconic. It's um, it's like you're walking into church there. I mean, and you think about it, it's like what Rupp is. But you're talking about an old, old building that no box seats, none of that stuff. This is basketball. The students, unbelievable. They'll, they'll be out. I imagine Bill will get them pizzas or whatever tonight. Um, so it'll be, well, we you know, every game is like tent city and t-shirts and so it's but i imagine they'll be hanging out there and uh you know the, like i said my memory i asked ted owens today i said coach owens do you think that shower that fog allen showered in is still there can i what if i went in the back could i find it because he laughed he said can you imagine we all dressed in one little locker room with two little showers I said yeah that's things have changed all right thank Yeah, um, it's definitely easier to have have that time to prepare, knowing that somebody's going to be out. Um, we have had a couple of times where somebody went out during the game and that kind of hit us hard. But, you know, we get, we got to keep fighting and keep uh, playing through that. But, you know, having some time to, you know, practice and go through different scenarios without certain people definitely does help. Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, Ian, I wondered if you how much you've watched Kansas. What sort of feel do you have for the challenge they present? Um, just them being Kansas and themselves present a challenge. They uh, always have a great team, always are going to be coached very well. Um, but when you sit down and watch them, you kind of notice the similarities between our two teams. They have a similar play style to us. So, you know, whoever go, goes out there and runs their stuff the best against each other will probably win the game. With two teams that have similar playing styles, what do you think it comes down to to determine who wins? Who runs their stuff the best and who's able to uh, get stops? You know, when you're playing against a team that plays like you, it's going to come down to, you know, me versus you. Can I get a stop guarding the ball? 
man, man on man. So if you can take on the challenge and get stops and, you know, be aggressive and make plays, that team is going to be the, the winner. Gabriel, we'll come to you next. Uh, Keon, you guys have already played in some pretty hellacious environments at LSU and Auburn and been shorthanded in both. What do you know about what you're stepping into tomorrow at Allen Fieldhouse in terms of the atmosphere? Oh, we know they have a, a great crowd. Um, I haven't played there before. I don't know if we have anybody on the team that's necessarily played there before, but, you know, we're going to get get their best shot like we do with every other team every night. We know that we're going to play against a really good team and the team that's going to be coached exceptionally well. So we got to go in and, you know, rely on one another because it's going to be loud in there. We got to communicate and, you know, just go out and just be one on the court and do what we can to make sure we're executing to the best of our ability. How much does this playing in, in arenas like Auburn and LSU going to help you, do you think, or, or are they all so unique that it doesn't matter? I mean, they all are unique, all different experiences. Um, LSU was crazy. Texas A&M had a pretty good crowd, and so did Auburn, but they were all different. Yeah, even Notre Dame was a, a pretty, pretty good crowd as well. But um, like I said, they're all different. And once the game gets started, I mean, you really get lost in the game. The crowd doesn't have too much of an effect unless you let it uh, affect the game. And you you take that stuff away by executing and uh, communicating with your teammates. So, I mean, once the game gets started, we're just going to focus in on ourselves and listen to what the staff got to tell us. Mitch Brown, go ahead. Keon, I mean, obviously a lot, you know, a lot of players want to, you know, relish getting shots offensively. But for you, you've been leaned on defensively. You had Jabari last week, um, and you've had a lot of top wing players throughout this season. How much do you relish the fact that you're leaned on defensively and, and down the stretch will have to do that even more? Uh, I take pride in that, being able to go out and know I'm have to guard one of the better players every night and taking on that challenge. Um of course, you know, everybody wants to shoot and score the ball, but the other there are going to be times where you have to, you know, strap, strap up and get stops. So uh, I like that I'm relied on to do that for this team. It's a, it's a, it's a challenge every single night because every team has some really good players, but, you know, I'm taking it upon myself to, you know, do what I can and make it tough on those guys. Jeff Drummond, go ahead. Yeah, Keon, I'm wondering – uh, Abaji from Kansas, and, and what's the challenge with him in this game? I mean, you just come down to he's a he's a good player. Um, he's shooting the ball really well right now. He's been making a lot of big shots for them down the stretch in close games. Um, I just think what it comes down to him, we, just, we can't give him a, a heavy dose of the same look. Um, you scheming for, for really good players. Um, you want to mix it up a little bit so they don't get a steady diet and you got to make them think on offense. And, you know, just uh, when you guard him, be, be the aggressor. Don't let him get to his spots. You know, try to take the thing, take away the things that he like. And try to make him do something that he doesn't do particularly well. And then once he pulls up and shoots the ball, you know, contest, and then you live with the result. Jerry Tipton finishes off with Keon, and then we'll have Sabir in here. Yeah, uh, Keon, I just wanted to ask you about Ty Ty. I know it's kind of been asked again and again. How important is he to what you guys get done? Extremely important. He he does a lot for this team. Uh, he's great when he's out at the off guard. We need him to score baskets. and and be aggressive. And then, you know, when he rotates to the one, he does a, an, an exceptional job of getting everybody involved, but also still being aggressive and knocking down the shots that he has. Defensively, he's been doing a great job guarding other teams' guards, point guards. He does a lot for our team. And uh, he's also one of our better communicators out there. Um, he's always assignment sound. So not having tight tie. The, the the times that we didn't have him was difficult, but you know we got guys that are stepping up, and I believe in the guys that are coming in, and they're going to do what they need to do to help us win. 
Do you have a uh, question you want to start us off? Yes, Javier. I wonder, uh, you're a competitor, at least I think of you that way. How uh, how excited do you get about a game like tomorrow? You know, two highly ranked teams going at it. Um, it's just another one of those things, like I mentioned earlier, being able um, to come here to play against the best of the best. And, um, you know, it's going to be our third Blue Blood. We played Duke first game of the year, played North Carolina, and um, playing a great a great team, a great challenge for us on the road at, at Kansas tomorrow night. So um, this is why you come to, to uh, Kentucky to compete against the best and, and go out there and, like you said, compete and hopefully win that game. What sort of challenge do you see Kansas in particular giving you guys? What what concerns are there? Um, You know, they play a lot like us. You know, they have a lot of good, um, you know, they have a lot of good players that are playing really well, and, and so do we. So uh, it's going to be a battle of execution on um, who can stay who can stay locked in the longest, who's going to bring that toughness, and um, also us staying composed because we are going into an environment that's a lot like ours, um, you know, with the fans on the road. So um, it's going to be a great game. I know we're looking forward to it. I know they are too. Um, and, you know, just like you said, getting ready to go out there and compete, and, you know, whoever is the better team that day is going to win. Nick Roush, go ahead. Cal said after taking two hard screens that responsibilities have now changed. It's on everybody to shout it out. And Coach Coleman, how, do, how does that change on, on your end? Um, uh, I mean, I still play the same way. I mean, obviously there's more people talking to me, but I don't know if you guys know this last game. I was still pressuring, but every once in a while I was kind of like peeking behind my head, uh, making sure there was no one there um, because – I mean, it's not like these guys are doing it on purpose. I mean, sometimes the, the gyms is, is just too loud. If you've ever been in that environment, I mean, you're locked in into what you're doing. I mean, you kind of kind of get lost or like blindsided by some things, you know. So, um, you know, last game, definitely I was able to hear them um, a lot. Um, you know, we're definitely going to need that, you know, coming into this game. But, um, you know, it was a collective effort. And, um, you know, I'm just pre appreciative that Coach Cal and the staff, you know, you know, gave everyone the responsibility to making sure that, if he wants his guards pressuring full court, that they ought to be protected as well. Go ahead, Jerry. Yes, Javier. Coach Cal said that uh, Ty Ty didn't practice yesterday. Damian didn't. Jacob didn't. Coach uh, Col uh, maybe Orlando wasn't there either. <laughs> what was that like to have so many missing people? Um, I mean, obviously you miss them just because they're not there. Their presence of every day, you know, those guys aren't there. But, um, you know, it gives us a better idea of how to prepare. It's easier to prepare um, when you're in practice rather than in making in-game adjustments um, in the fly. When it's like, oh, no, someone's down. You don't know if he's able to come back or not. But uh, 
like Coach Cal always says, is next man up. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that those guys went down, but this can be someone else's opportunity to show why um, they came. They came, and if you know, they did. Are they are they deserving to play, um, and how they can help um, impact us in, in a winning way? So, um, you know, you know, we want those guys to get healthy. Want them to take their time. But uh, you know, we still got we still got things to get better at, and things to look forward to with other great players on our team as well. Nick Gabriel, go ahead. Yeah, Ty Ty, we talked to Keon about this as well, but this is, a, I think, the fourth time you're going to be playing in a house, and maybe more than that, where they're just going absolutely nuts. It's got the low ceiling. It's incredibly loud. Tell me about the challenge to running an offense and trying to communicate as a, the quarterback on the floor in an arena like that with that kind of atmosphere. Um, you know, I think we've gotten, like you said, it's like fourth or, or maybe more. So I think we've had a little bit of um, practice with that end game, knowing how to communicate with each other. I think the biggest thing is going to be uh, making sure we huddle up, um, you know, you know, make it quick, but make it, you know, effective, like keywords, because um, it's going to be loud, like you said. But um, I think our overall flow, our overall chemistry is going to help us a lot. I um, mean, we know what we're doing. We know um, how to get to our spots. We trust each other. We know what we're going to be. So as long as we keep that trust and sharing the ball, um, I think we're going to be all right. Gary Tipton, go ahead. Yes, Javier. I wonder if you've watched Remy Martin much and uh, what challenge does he present? And does he remind you of you at all? No, I, no, he doesn't remind me of me. Um, but I've watched him. You know, I've played against him my freshman year. Um, you know, he's he's really good. Um, he has good speed. I mean, he's at Kansas for a reason. So you always respect your opponent, um, but you don't fear anyone. Um, you know, you're gonna attack him the same way you attack you know anyone else that's on the court. Um, but you know, ultimately, I'm trying to win the game. I know you know he's he's a big part of what they do, along with the other guards and other great players that they have. But uh, we're going in there to compete and, and win the game. How do you think you're a different player than him? I think we're different all around. I think the only thing we have, maybe two things we only have in common is our hair and he, we can run fast. But uh, I think we, we're two different, completely different players. You know, I'm, I can, uh, you know, get guys involved. Um, you know, that's all I want to say right now. But, uh, you know, he's a great player nonetheless. Like, I'm not taking anything from him. He's there for a reason. He's a, he's, well, you know, a proven scorer. Um, he's a he's a veteran. You know, he's been in college game for some time. He's won some big games, but uh, you know, I'm not really you know, you know, looking into that too much. Thanks. If there are no other questions for Savir, we will uh, get him down to practice. Thank you all so much.